Hello Fun Nation! Welcome back to Funalysis, the show where we break down the best and most innovative strategies in FIRST every single week. My name is James Osterhaus, an alum and former driver for Team 107 Robotics and a current robotics student at the University of Michigan. Today, we'll be breaking down the finale of the Michigan State Championship, the epic Fimstein Finals. With algae stealing, robots falling over, and gutsy plays from both alliances, these matches live up to the hype. Without further ado, let's take a look into the strategy here on Funalysis. This video on fun is brought to you by viewers like you and also in partnership with the following. Earn up to a $5,000 sponsorship for your team or $2,000 individual prize when you provide a video submission to the Altair Global Student Contest at altair.com contest. You can build better robots faster with Altair tools and provide multiple video submissions for the contest. Download Altair tools for free. Scan the QR code or go to altair.com contest for further details. Animark provides superior service with the reliability that teams expect. Check out their sport gearbox and ratchet sport options to their tried and true compliant wheels used by teams all over the world. From mechanical and electrical products to tools and hardware, head on over to animark.com for your one-stop shop of high quality and affordable solutions. Alrighty then, let's take a dive into our finals one, two, and three matches here on Fimstein. Uh, really incredible teams uh, from all the teams involved. Our, our six teams here are some of the best in FIM, and just some of the strategies that they pull out here, simply incredible. So let's take a look at the uh, the alliances we're going to be watching today. On the Red Alliance, uh, we have the Hemlock Alliance, captained by Hall of Fame Team 67. That's the hot team. Incredible robot. Definitely one of the best in FIM, and did a really good job of selecting their alliance here. Their first pick is Team 2767 Strike Force, two-time world championship back-to-back -back in 2017 and 18, but notably never won a Michigan State championship well until now. Uh, but we're going to see how they did that in these three matches. In their second pick, an incredible robot, 5843, that's Flurb, up-and-coming Michigan team. Great to see them have some success here. Over on the blue side of the field, we have the Aptive Alliance, captained by 2075, that's Enigma Robotics, coming out of Grand Rapids, Michigan. In their first pick, the unbelievable Engineer, it's Team 2337. One of the best scouting teams uh, in the state of Michigan, I'd say, and uh, they were able to unlock a great pick, and that is Team 858, the Demons, kind of an algae specialist robot, and really unlocks their strategy here um, and how finals one, two, and three play out which I think is a pretty high-level strategy for both these um, on both sides of the field, and that we'll see um, as, they, as they play this weekend. As It's going to be similar to what we'll see in Einstein. So hopping into Auton, we're going to see 67 run kind of a pretty unique corner Auton here where they're picking up ground pieces, their ground intake, pretty spectacular. If you haven't watched their behind the bumpers, make sure you go check that out. I want to pause here a second. Take a look. 858 actually just in Auton removed this LG off the reef and is going to go score in the barge. Um, so although both alliances come out of Auton with 7 L4 uh, Coral on the reef. We will see that the Blue Alliance coming right into Teleop here is going to jump ahead 62 to 58. Um, Engine Nerds did also, they also have a four-piece Auton that hits about 50-50. They just missed placing that right on the reef um, right there. So pretty interesting uh, dynamic. We'll see um, Blue actually coming out ahead this time. Um, so as we move into Teleop, Hot and Strike Force are both going to do super cycles, and that really allows them to do well in the LG race. We'll see Strike Force going here with their first LG. 67, watch uh, right here as they're going to pick up. Uh, they're going to both pick up their first LG as well as then place their first Coral and Teleop. These, this level of super cycling ability is what allows them to not only win the LG race in some of these matches, but also continue to fill up the whole reef while their second pick, Flurb, just slams Coral all match long. Pretty exciting to watch. Um, on the blue side of the field, however, the engine nerds, who are probably the best Coral robot in Michigan, um, they can't do LG in the barge. They can pick up LG and put it in the processor, um, but their strategy throughout this match, um, they they need to just slam, slam, slam Coral, while 2075 and 858 are able to do that, that LG. Um, so we're going to see Strike Force continue to do these super cycles here over on the red side of the field where they're picking up LG, placing Coral, really good balance um, and allowing them to stay competitive in both aspects of the game. Um, I think both alliances here really realized that Coral was going to be basically even in that like 150-ish range. Uh, it's LG and barge points that are going to be the difference maker. Um, so we're going to see actually, we're going to take a quick pause here. The engine nerds, we're, let's go back here just a second uh, to like 133. Watch the engine nerds right here as they come back. They're going to, they know that they see this LG on the floor right here. 
Um, and they're going to try to pick it up, right, to, to protect it from stealing because they know Strike Force is going to be coming over soon, um, as they expected as, from watching other matches, right? Um, but actually, if you go back here just a second, we can see that Engineer kind of like double intakes it right here as they're about to place on the reef. Um, and that pops the LG right here. Um, which was almost tragic for the Engineers, um, and losing out on the ability to score that LG was somewhat tragic. Um, now, we're going to be into the point of the game where the LG race is essentially over, and Strike Force is crossing over to this side of the field, right? This is the part of all three of these matches that gets really interesting. Um, and their ability to... All right, so they, they place LG in the barge really well, but their ability to go and out play defense and just completely pivot... They're the best, one of the best robots on their alliance, and they just shut down whoever they're playing against, right? And this is the trap that Strike Force set for the Engine Nerds there. Engine Nerds is going to try to go over and use Enigma's human player station. Now Strike Force is ready to lay the smack down on both blue robots, and, and that really causes a big traffic jam. And the ability for them to cause so much havoc, such a small amount of time, uh, re really impressive. Um, we're going to go back here in a second to... Um, to one minute watch strike force kind of hit the engineers kind of forcing them to cause a miss here um right on the human player station that kind of delay um now this coral stuck right in between the nerds and the wall that's just making it harder for them as a human player load station robot to uh to get to the human player um now right here at 50 seconds we're going to notice that the nerds are able to jerk uh, to juke out strike force um and get back um but Strike Force is able to do this really good moving screen. Watch as they just kind of are able to move with the engineers and use the fact that, all right, Strike Force is allowed to be in the reef zone. It's just that engineers can't be in the reef zone and, and contact Strike Force as well. So they're able to really hold off um, engineers really well until engineers pivots off them. So really, really solid um, defense there. Now, we notice here back at 40 seconds, let's move back, the engineers are able to finally get that LG off, enabling them to hopefully go and climb at the end of the game. Um, but it's not looking great. Um, the demons are over here um, trying to defend Flurb. They know that 67 is going to be a really hard robot to defend with their ground intake. But down 20 with only less than 40 seconds left in the game, it's not looking good for Blue. Um, they're basically just thinking... All right, can we beat them in the barge? And unfortunately, the Red Alliance, and we'll see this throughout most of their matches um, on Saturday at MSC, was able to triple climb. Um, and the Blue Alliance, the Demons, does not have a deep climb. Um, so their max barge really was 26 points, uh, which just is not going to cut it when you're trying to have a big swing. Um, so as we, as we watch um, Finals 1 here wrap up, Hemlock has this pretty much wrapped up, and they're able to secure their triple climb to win the match. Um, we're going to take a look at the final score here in just a second as this match wraps up. And we're going to see that, all right, Hemlock won the match pretty handily, right? Um, but let's take a look at the, kind of the breakdown. We see that Coral um, was pretty much even. It's negligible. But that LG in the barge was where this match was won and lost. So Blue must be thinking, how can we adjust to win the LG battle and offset our lack of triple climb? Well, let's find out in Finals 2. All right, moving on now to Finals 2. Uh, we're going to take a look through this match just like we did with Finals 1. Um, starting off into Auton, Hot is going to actually go, and they're able to watch them over on this side of the field. Uh, they're able to actually hit their four-piece in this match, which is pretty killer. And unfortunately, 2075 um, is going to miss a Coral uh, there in their Autonomous, and Engine Nerds is barely, barely, barely going to miss um, their, their fourth piece, uh, which is going to cause Blue to come out down two L4 pieces in Auton. Um, that's a pretty hard spot to come back from. I know Blue is probably, oh man, we need to recover now in this situation, right? And, and although they can go and score right away, both those two pieces and tally up, uh, those lack of a two-point bonus, that hurts. And when you're in a do-or-die situation like Finals 2 is for them, you got to be getting those points. Um, so we're going to start into tally up. And once again, LG is the focus for A58 and 2075 on the blue side of the field. They know that they have to win this race unfortunately 2075 there is going to go up and shoot um but they're going to miss this first lg here at two uh, just lose the grip and, and that's really unfortunate for them um they're thinking all right we're down we got to make a play right this is incredible guys watch this 2075 is actually going to go cross over to the other side of the field 
what are they doing? We haven't seen this yet from them. This is the kind of game-breaking strategy that the Blue Alliance cooked up in between Finals 1 and 2 and said, all right, we need to swing this match. How are we going to do it? Well, Enigma is going to freaking steal an LG off of the Red Alliance Reef. What a gutsy play. What an incredible... That's an eight-point swing. That's four points less that the Red Alliance doesn't get to score and four points that the Blue Alliance does score. That's incredible. Uh, so now let's watch Strike Force go. Eight... 858 is sees this low hanging fur right there. They're gonna go crossover and get it. Strike Force at the top of the screen up here is also gonna see that. Watch them come over and just beat up 858. This I believe was in our clips of the week as well this week. Just what an incredible heads up play from those drivers to go and just beat 858 to it. Um, 858 should have won the race to that one, but Strike Force is able to go and now super cycle. Um, they're gonna go score and Strike Force demonstrates their good ability to uh to place LG in the top of the of the barge um although does lose their grip on that one right there um so as we continue to watch we're going to see uh right at 101 the demons is going to go up um and they're going to miss this LG and at this point I would say it's not looking too good for blue um right their strike force is probably thinking all right we're up a little bit let's switch to defense now, their crucial mistake here in this this pivot right at 55 seconds left is there's still some algae left on the field, on the red side of the field. There's one, there's two. Maybe they're saying, all right, 67 can wrap this up, but 67's uh, ground algae pickup is not ideal. That's 27, 67's priority, right? That leaves 858 here at the bottom of our screen ready and able to kind of make a difference in this match. So Strike Force is going to cross over, um, and 858 is going to start doing their thing over on this far side of the field and score in that LG. They're saying, all right, we can we can win this LG race. Um, Strike Force is going to try to lay the smack down down at Engine Nerds. Does a successful job of it. Strike Force's defense in all three of these matches is incredible, no doubt about it. Um, but 858 over on the side of the field. Also, watch this play from 858. Incredible heads up. Um, watch them just kind of swing around as Hot's trying to pick up this piece of coral right here. They're just going to completely reject Hot from picking that up for a moment and then go and hit Flurb right here, um, right at their human player station. Just incredible plays from 858. If you want to win a match in the Fimstein finals, that's the kind of driving you need, and Demons is able to do it. As we get into the final 20 seconds, Demons kind of looking slow at the top of the screen, but is able to come up, and they're going to score this final LG right here on the barge, get their park. Engine Nerds is going to get their climb. The Red Alliance misses their climbs. They only get one up. And Aptiv is able to win Finals 2. What an incredible swing. Yes, they finally did it. We're going to take a look at our scores here. Blue wins this match. They won both the Algae battle and the Barge battle. So much so, they could afford to lose out 20 points on Coral. Remember that 8-point swing caused by Enigma stealing Algae from the Reef? Well, it paid off here with their six-point win in Finals 2. And then there was one. The Finals tiebreaker on Fimstein. It all comes down to this. The hot team is going to start their Auton off, and they're unfortunately going to miss two out of their four, Coral and Auton. The Engineers, however, on the blue side of the field, are able to hit all four of their Coral. The Blue Alliance is going to come out ahead of Auton for their first time since Finals 1, and they have got to be feeling good at this point. Both alliances are going to go into Teleop furiously, thinking, all right, we need to win the LG race. Whichever alliance has won LG has won both of these matches. So we'll see. Unfortunately, 2075 is going to go and miss for their second match in a row now, that first LG. Pretty crucial um, opportunity loss there for Blue. Um, so as we continue to watch, uh, it's not too long, unfortunately, before tragedy strikes for the Blue Alliance. Watch Engine Nerds. After they go and get this Coral, they're going to come and they're going to try to pick up that LG. Well, they didn't exactly pitch up and pick up that LG. Uh, it bounces right off their bumper. And this LG is just going to be rolling around right inside of the field. And this is this is really where problem starts. As 858 in a moment's notice is kicking this LG is up and over. Engine Nerds tries to save it right there. Oh my goodness. It happened right in front of my eyes. You might be able to see me filming right there. Um, yeah, that was awful. Um, this is just the worst case scenario that you can have on the highest stakes. Um, no fault really of anybody other than just a really unfortunate situation um, of where L LG was. And I know truly that both alliances here wish that we could have played a an equal match, not a two on three. 
Um, and, and Blue Alliance has lost most of their algae firepower just less than 30 seconds into the match. Not not a good start. Unfortunately for Blue, the Teemans are kind of sitting here cutting off the Engine Earths, further making it harder for them to score Coral. Um, and this is just not a good situation. Um, by 130, we've seen that 20... 2767's already cleared all the LG off the red side of the field, and they're going to start uh, their signature defense, kind of moving over uh, to the blue side of the field. Um, coming up here in just five seconds, we're going to see four blue robots all in this corner. Um, Strike Force is able to kind of corner both Enigma and Engine Nerds, uh, obviously 858 on the ground. Um, and that's just not a good situation. Um, it's it's real bad news for Blue. Um, obviously, having a robot down is, is bad to start, but in that position, it's not good. Um, we're going to see Strike Force kind of back off here um, at 105, um, but in a big hit right here, um, they're going to be able to knock out this LG from Enigma, further making the LG race an even harder situation. Um, so kind of moving in now to the controversial part of Finals 3. Obviously, their blue is down 50 points already, uh, but Strike Force is going to come over here um, when they're defending 2075 and start to push 858 out of the way, right? Um, and Engine Nerd's kind of there too, um, but this is kind of the move right here as Strike Force is pivoting off of 2075. They're going to push 858 right back into the Coral Station. Um, should this be a foul is the question, right? And in this situation, there's four fouls that I've heard people talk about. And and mo at this point, the match is essentially wrapped up. There's not much that Blue can do. Uh, the four fouls that people talked about is G210, causing another robot to commit a foul. Not really relevant here is 858 did not commit any fouls. G211, which is egregious behavior not outlined in the rules, probably the most relevant to be talked about here, but a really hard judgment call to make in Finals 3 of Fimstein. G423, this isn't combat robotics. It's really hard to say if Strike Force damaged A58, plus since A58 was already incapacitated at the time, I'd say that no call was the safe thing to do here. And then finally, G426, two plus robots can't collude to shut down gameplay. Since A58 and 2767 aren't partners, this doesn't apply. So overall, as gut-wrenching as it was for Finals 3 to go out like this, I totally understand why there was no call in this situation. I sincerely believe that everyone involved wishes that 858 was upright for the entire match and that we saw more evenly matched finals three i don't think that strike force had any bad intentions in pushing 858 uh, back into the, the coral station and they really didn't gain much advantage from it either it's just quite hard to drive on that field i think regardless the strategy played out in these matches was simply epic huge congratulations to both alliances on fantastic matches all throughout saturday at msc and congratulations to our winning hemlock alliance their captain 67 has now won their fifth state championship in a long-awaited first state championship for Team 2767 Strike Force. Their second, second pick, Flurb, should not go unnoticed, putting up great coral numbers under defense. So exciting to see them break out into FIM glory. As we approach the World Championships, the meta is revealing itself. From the Pacific Northwest all the way down to Texas, LG has become the name of the game, and the battle is just beginning. Buckle up, because Houston is going to be intense. Let me know in the comment section down below where you saw these high levels of play this past weekend. And if you're traveling to Houston, what's your team doing to prepare? Thank you so much for watching this edition of Funalysis on the Fun Robotics Network. This is James Osterhaus, signing off. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and click the bell to stay up to date on future fun videos. Animark provides superior service with the reliability that teams expect. Check out their sport gearbox and ratchet sport options to their tried and true compliant wheels used by teams all over the world. From mechanical and electrical products to tools and hardware, head on over to animark.com for your one-stop shop of high quality and affordable solutions. Earn up to a $5,000 sponsorship for your team or a $2,000 individual prize when you provide a video submission to the Altair Global Student Contest at altair.com slash contest. You can build better robots faster with Altair tools and provide multiple video submissions for the contest. Download Altair tools for free. Scan the QR code or go to altair.com slash contest for further details.